It was winter all over again on the island of Sodor. It was like a thick white blanket all around the railway. The engines felt as if their fireboxes would freeze. Cheer up, puffed Thomas. At least we'll still have work to do. Yes, yes, agreed Percy. Plenty of work. Gordon agreed too. If it means for me to put on my big snow plow and blast through the snow. All the other engines chuckled. They continued to chuckle until Sir Topham Hatton walked up. Quiet, he said. Now, as far as you are happy with the snow, it is still dangerous to our rails. Which means no engine shall continue service until the snow is drifted away. Donald and Douglas, you'll help be patrolling the line. The twins were excited. Thomas, you'll be collecting sand from the docks. The sand dock for the engines to grip on the rails in case they're slippery. Thomas was excited. Sir, whistled Percy, was James. James, continued Sir Totten Hat, is taking Terence to help clear the roads. Thomas was cheerful. He knew Terence would love to help clear the snow. Meanwhile, over in the yards, Mavis had overheard the conversation. I wish I could be helpful too, she thought to herself. Later, Donald and Douglas were cheerfully patrolling the line. Keep pushing, Dougie, called the Donald. Keep pulling, Donnie, whistled Douglas. The mail's van was at the crossing when Donald and Douglas rushed past, blowing snow onto it. James was dutifully waiting at the station as he waited for Terrence to clear the snow box. Heavy but lovely stuff, Terrence chanted. Heavy but lovely. James was in a hurry and wanted to tell Terrence to hurry. But in his thoughts, he thought about Christmas. And the more he thought about it, the less he wanted to be angry. All done, wheezed Terence. Well done, Terence, said James proudly. Meanwhile, Mavis was shunting in the yard when Sir Topham Hatt walked up to her. Ah, Mavis, he said. Be a good engine and stay in the sheds for a little. But why? asked Mavis. No time to explain, said Sir Topham Hatt and walked away. Mavis knew better than to argue, so she trundled straight to the shed. Soon Mavis was in the shed, but she felt lonely. The other engines weren't even there. They had all gone off to work, and that made her very sad. What am I to do if I'm still in the sheds all winter? She sighed. If I'm here for hours, my engine will freeze in the breeze. She shivered with having a frozen engine. Meanwhile, Thomas was cheerfully chuffing down the line with a trainload of sand. Not so fast, Thomas, cautioned his driver. A fast pace like that and the sand will be lost. Sorry, said Thomas. I just want to be really useful. The driver chuckled. Every engine on Sodor does. Thomas chuckled, but then he thought about Mavis. I saw her in the sheds before I left. I wonder how she's doing. When Thomas arrived at the sheds, he saw the other engines were there. Mavis included. After parking his trucks, he went for Mavis. Sir Topham Hatt has asked me to stay here, Thomas, she said, but I don't feel useful here. Don't worry, Mavis, Thomas comforted. I'm sure Sir Topham Hatt will have a special job for you soon. The time will come, I'm sure of it. All the other engines agreed. The sound of the wind had made them drift to sleep. 
Later that night, Mavis was resting when all of a sudden, she heard a strange creaking sound. Who, who's there? She whispered. It's only me, said a voice. Mavis looked down. There was her driver. Hello, driver, she said. What brings you here? Where to go out on the main line, her driver replied. Something important, I think. But the wind is so fierce, worried Mavis. Don't worry, a shortest driver. We'll be back in no time. Her engine turned on, and Mavis slunk quietly out of the shed. Soon she was out on the main line. But she didn't realize that her driver and Sir Tom Matt had an actual plan for her. She began to trundle along the line. Ooh, this is cold, she shuddered. But my engine is warm. Couldn't agree more, chuckled her driver as they continued on their way. When she arrived, the other engines were surprised to see her back. Where have you been? asked Henry. You weren't in the sheds when we woke up. Mavis was about to explain when old Sir Topham had arrived. Mavis, you've done an outstanding job, he cried. Mavis was puzzled. What did I even do, sir, she asked. Don't you see, laughed Sir Topham Hatt. You were on the midnight run. I arranged for you and your driver to run up the main line so the friction of your engine and wheels could dry the rails. That way, the ice will melt. Mavis was speechless. You mean it, sir? She asked. Of course, Sir Top Matt boomed. But it was a secret from the other engines. I knew you of all engines were very reliable. So everyone, continued Sir Tom Matt, thanks to Midnight Mavis, every everyone can get back to work normally. Well done, Midnight Mavis, Thomas whistled, and all the engines gave three cheers to Mavis. Mavis just smiled brightly. If that was Sir Top Matt's plan, why didn't he use our steam engines to heat the rail? Nothing ever happens to us. We are reliable.